all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Welcome to Debella Entertainment and HDNet's Broadway Boxing. Presented by Turning Stone Resort and Casino from the Hammerstein Ballroom at Manhattan Center. Tonight's fights are promoted by Debella Entertainment and sponsored by HBO Sports, LocateStock.com, Punch, and the Norwich Navigators, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ron Scott Stevens, Commissioner Jerome Becker, Executive Deputy Commissioner Hugo Spindola, Deputy Commissioner Bob Mangi, Deputy Commissioner Frank Gibbs, Director of Boxing Ralph Petrillo, and the Chief Inspector Bobby Wall. The timekeeper at the bell, Kathy Paolillo. Counting the knockdown seconds, Joe Cusano. The three doctors at ringside, Dr. Osric King, Steve Gelfman, and Joseph Herrera. And the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point must system, Glenn Feldman, John McKay, and Jimmy Pierce. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Michael Ortega. And now, eight rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first to my left, he's wearing Carolina blue, weighing in officially at 139 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 17 wins and one loss, nine coming by way of knockout from Forest City, North Carolina. Jeremy Elton, the Carolina King. And his opponent to my right, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing black and gold, weighing in and officially at an even 140 pounds. His professional record, perfect, with 19 wins, five coming by way of knockout. Representing Brooklyn, New York, Holy the Magic Man, Malinaji! Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch them up, and good luck to both of you. All right, we're ready for boxing here in New York City in the junior welterweight division. Pauli Malinaji from Brooklyn, New York, against Jeremy Yelton from Forest City, North Carolina. And the question for the Magic Man, has that right hand healed? Well, it definitely um, get tested, and we'll see how the right hand holds up. Such a charismatic fighter. Here comes Paulie Malinaji and Yelp. You know, I talk to Paulie all the time. He, he's one of the guys who, um, who I give a lot of advice to, you know, only because they, they, there are some similarities with the hand issues. Yeah, Brian, you were uh, actually forced to retire because of hand injuries. How many operations do you have on that hand? I had four. It was the same ever, right hand. Same right hand four times. Was it ever right after, say, the first one? Actually, no. Um, you know, before my first surgery, a lot of pain. I used to have to ice it a lot. Um, but after the surgery, the hand became more delicate. You know, before the surgery, it would hurt a lot. But it wouldn't be, like, killing me weeks and weeks after fights. But after the first surgery, after that, it was like just the first time I hit something, it would break. Now, Malinaji's had some serious, serious work done. A bone graft, some screws put in. I mean, you're talking about a bionic hand. You're not old enough to remember Jerry Cotsia, the <laughs> no, former heavyweight champion from South Africa who had his hand fused together and actually made him a harder puncher. We'll, well see if the same thing happens here. Well, we had the same surgery procedure. I had my um, my hand fused, the bone taken from the hip, just like Paulie. Wow. But um, as I said, like today, I can't make a tight fist, you know, two and a half years later. Huh. And he hasn't really used the right hand yet, if you notice. It's been all left, a couple of rights to the body. And you know, that that's the thing that stands out. In training, my right hand, you know, it, it never really bothered me that much, but the minute I get into a fight, mentally, I have it in, my, in the back of my mind, don't throw the right hand, don't throw wow. the right hand. Wow. 
I know that Paulie has gone with the traditional winning glove, which Floyd Mayweather Jr. loves because of padding around the knuckle. I mean, I, I was always an Everlast guy, you know, coming up fighting. I felt their gloves were pretty comfortable, but I guess it's a matter of, um, you know, each his own. Yeah, and you would think when you've had hand problems like Malinaji, you'd be extra careful in which glove you select to fight. Right. That's the first thing that comes to mind when you sign for a fight. Really? Is which glove you're going to wear? Protecting the hand, yeah. It's ah. the first thing that comes to mind. And there was a right hand he tried. He slapped with a little there, but he's letting it go a little. Malinaji so much quicker than Yelton. It's almost as if Pauly is traveling at a different frequency. <laughs> Yelton just missing. And if Yelton stays in front of him and try to counterpunch Pauly, it'll never happen. Too quick on his feet, too quick with his hands. It would seem to me that the best way to fight Malinaji is to rough him up. Attack him. You know, I just spar with Pauly. I mean, granted, it was early in his career, but my jab was always a key with me with Pauly. Jabbers don't like to be jabbed, is what you're saying. Malinaji clowning around already. Round two scheduled for eight. Paulie Malinaji against Jeremy Yelton. Malinaji using the jab, Wally, in the first round. Sure is. You know, the numbers don't always tell the story in boxing, but in this case, I think they do. Malinaji connected 39 times, according to CompuBox first round. 28 of them were jabs. And there was actually a pretty good right hand there by Malinaji. You know, walking Paulie's corner tonight is, you know, the famed center Billy Giles. You know, most people remember Billy Giles as working with Aaron Davis, the welterweight champion. Not me. But he started with Hector Camacho oh, yeah. Jr., which I'm was a speedster. I know I'm telling you my age, but yes, I remember when he had Hector Camacho. <laughs> and if you think Paul Malinaji resembles Camacho a little bit in the ring, that might be the reason. <laughs> Camacho was just a bit faster than Paul. Yes, Lassie. he was. And a southpaw. Yes. Ooh! Ooh. He ran Yelton into a lot of Yelton taking his time, trying to close the distance, continues to miss with that left hook. But you know why, Gus and Brian, that's what happens when you fool around in the ring. He ran into a punch he never should have been hit with, and I'm talking about Malinaji. And the thing about Yelton that stands out to me, Yelton actually got offended that Paulie was clowning. He should. Right. And, and he made Paulie pay for it. He kept trying. And he finally made Paulie pay for it. Did anybody ever do that to you in the ring? Clowning? No. You know, to me, boxing is humiliating enough to the loser. There's no reason to disrespect the guy like Left that. Left hook gets it for Malinaji. Actually, let me take that back. My last performance against um, Juan Valenzuela, tough Mexican. I hit him in the second round with, my, with the best right hand. He did a dance right in front of me. Huh. Was that because of the punch? Well, I broke my hand on that punch, so. Oh. Yep, he's trying. He's not only trying, he's succeeding. This round, he's doing very, very well. 58 seconds remaining in the second round. Yelton trying to step it up a bit. Comes in with a 17-1 record, has 19 KOs under his belt. Malinaji continues to jab to the midsection. If you notice, though, Malinaji is keeping his distance. Right. Yelton with a beautiful left hook, and that backs up Malinaji. Before that, he was keeping his distance because he's getting hit. And the right hand landing for Yelton. This is where Paulie needs to just go back to basic, pick that left hand up, work your jab. He's known for his jabs. He's not really jabbing. Got his hand down, he's just trying to clown him out. Let me ask you a question, Brian Adams. Can Paul Malinaji go back to basics? Does he know how to fight a basic fight? We shall see. End of the round, right hand getting in for Yelton. And this North Carolina kid isn't backing down. How about this? Round three, scheduled for eight. How did you guys, how do you guys have this bout scored so far? I haven't scored even. I gave Paulie the first round, thought Yelton did more than enough work to win the second round. Ditto. Yelton getting closer. And Malinaji now starting to rely more heavily on his jab. You know, being honest, being at the weigh-in, you know, amongst the guys, hanging with the guys, speaking with Yelton and Sam Paulie, I figured it'd be a mismatch. 
But Joe Kiembo, the matchmaker, I mean, I guess he knows something a lot of us don't know. Yeah, and you know, another thing that you have to remember is two things you have to remember. Guys that come out of South Carolina very often get a bad rap. There's a lot of bad fighters up coming at us. That's, that's number one. Number two is Paulie's been off for a long time. Been off since December. Yeah, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, boxers down there, they don't, they don't get much respect because that's known as a small circuit. Most of them are known as opponents. Yes. So, so but, but, but time and time, you'll catch one creeper, one sleeper, and Yelton looks like this he's This may be sleeper. the one. Right. Yelton, fundamentally <laughs> sound, keeps both hands up at all times. Stance perfectly balanced. And he's in obviously terrific physical condition. And Paulie's not dictating and controlling the pace like he normally do. Paulie's still reluctant to throw the right hand. Beautiful jab. Uh, there's another. There's another. That's bread and butter for Paulie Malinaji. Malinaji getting back to basics. to go in the third round. You get the feeling, though, Gus, that Yelton is just trying to time that jab. He's waiting for the right moment to drop a right hand. I agree with you 100%. And one thing I like, Yelton is actually aiming at Paulie's shoulder with his jab. He's, he's punching at Paulie's shoulder, which is not a bad idea. You know, Brian, when you know that your opponent has a bad right hand or has a, at least a question about his right hand, do you stop worrying about it? Um, I mean, uh, actually, no. I mean, if, if Yelton is smart, he would make Paulie throw the right hand. He would force Paulie to throw the right hand. To find out. Right. Fight him on that side. Right now, he's allowing Paulie to, you know, this round to jab a lot. But he should make Paulie actually throw more right hands. Should he be moving to his own left to make him, to force him to throw the right hand? Exactly. He should work the jab more, pump his jab more. Ten seconds to go in the third round. Scheduled for eight. Ali Malinaji and a game Jeremy Yelton. Round four between Paulie Malinaji and Jeremy Yelton. Malinaji in black and gold, Yelton in the Carolina blue trunks. And gentlemen, how do you have this bout scored thus far through three? I got a two rounds and one for Paulie, 29 28 in his favor. You know, you love fights like this because they're not hard to score. <laughs> you know, sometimes the styles make it so difficult. This one, no doubt, Malinaji won the third round. Well, you asked a question at the end of the second round, which I really didn't answer. You said, can Paulie get back the basics? Obviously, the corner instilled that in, reminded him of that. At the end of the second round and third round, we seen him go back to his basics. Yeah, because what the question that I meant was, has he become too gimmicky if he needs to just settle in and fight a fight? Can he do that? I think he can. You know, guys, I would love to be able to grow hair like Paulie Malinaji, <laughs> but it gives him the look of somebody who's just been surprised by something. <laughs> Growing up Gotti. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he could be Miss Gotti's son. No <laughs> doubt about it. I'm going to stay away from that one since they live near my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But see, I did expect Paulie to throw the right hand a little bit more in this fight. He just haven't really committed to the right hand. Well, as you pointed out before, Brian, that could be as much mental as physical. I know with me it was. I only threw the right hand once I knew I had the openings. It's a good jab there by Yelton. Paulie Malinaji and Jeremy Yelton in the fourth round, <laughs> scheduled for eight. Paulie's actually look over here talking to us. Paulie's got to get. Paulie's got to get busy as well. <laughs> I guess there's a place for it. But the thing about it, Yelton is allowing him to do this. Yelton yes. is allowed standing in front of Paulie, allowing Paulie to dictate the pace. I believe what you said earlier, Wally Matthews, Yelton is trying to time Malinaji. He's not very quick. Malinaji, the much quicker fighter, Yelton technically sound, but he's trying to figure out when that jab or maybe even that right hand is coming. There's a slip, but you know what, Gus? When you are technically sound, 
if you can keep your punches straight and catch your man out of position, one thing about Malinaji, he allows himself to get out of position quite often because he clowns. You don't have to be the faster guy. You just have to be in the right spot. Mozart, there you go. Let's see if he can do it. Yelton, that is. Yelton came in with a little mouse under his eye. It's starting to swell now under his right arm. Yelton hasn't put that serious heat in the kitchen against Malinaji, and that's how you got to fight him in a phone booth. It will be interesting to see, and now that. <laughs> Round five scheduled for eight between Pauli Malinaji in the black and gold and Jeremy Yelton in the Carolina Blue Trunks. This is a junior welterweight fight. Malinaji 19 and 0, Yelton 17 and 1. And you know, right now, Gus, Malinaji is jabbing him into oblivion. 22 punches landed, it's only three for Yelton in that round, but 20 of those punches, according to CompuBox, were jabs. So Paulie Malinaji is staying with that left hand, staying away from the right. For all we know, the other two may have been left hooks. CompuBox is presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electronic stock locates. Beautiful jab by Malinaji, landing flush. Now he hooks. And in between rounds, Jeremy Yelton's corner, Lamar Parks, who's actually a tough, very good junior Middleway. welterweight. Was he junior, junior welterweight? welterweight? He, he was, was scheduled a real to good fight, fighter. He's scheduled to fight um, Mr. Taylor, and he ran into a few medical problems, and that, fight, and that fight got pulled. But he was an excellent fighter. He was imploring Jeremy Yelton to rough Paulie up, make Paulie fight. And, and that's what you have to do against He's got to start soon, too, because half of the rounds are already in the bank. There's Yelton. Trying to get inside of Malinaji, but Malinaji wisely ties him up. That eye starting to swell up a little bit for Yelton. And the problem for Yelton is very simple. There is a lack of speed. He is, hasn't been able to catch up with the feline quickness of Pauli Malinaji. You know, I'm glad you used that word, Gus, because I was just thinking, I got a look suddenly of Prince Nazim Hamed. <laughs> you know, and here's a guy, if this is what's happened, this is his legacy, now we're going to see a generation of guys fighting like Prince Nazim. And Heaven thing, help us. And the thing about the Prince was that not only was he lightning fast, but he, he had hit power you. in he both hit. hands. He could hit for a featherweight, yeah. He was a tall midget, but he can punch. <laughs> a tall midget. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the thing, thing about... That that I'm was sorry. really striking about him was he couldn't hit him. Right. Yet his moves yep. were, were so unorthodox that he could not be hit. And the minute you miss, the thunder was coming. Whatever happened to the Prince after that Barrera know. loss? He had one fight at the Barrera, and he made a ton of money. He's home just relaxing. What a great fight he had at the Garden. Of Kevin Beautiful Kevin. right hand by Malinaji. And that backs up Yelton. Yelton may be hurt. Another right hand. You know, as much as hurt, I think Yelton's pretty frustrated. And you saw it on his face right there. He could not wait to get at Malinaji. And the more he tries, the harder it is to hit him. Welcome back, sixth round scheduled for eight. Pauli Malinaji in the black, Jeremy Yelton from North Carolina in the blue. And if you notice, the right eye of Yelton has a severe bruise under it. Well, it didn't happen in the ring. He came in with a bruise under that eye from sparring. But Malinaji is trying to get it to swell up a little bit. And what Jeremy Yelton was just doing there is exactly what Lamar Parks is telling him to do. He tried to rough Pauling Malinaji up with his shoulders, with his elbows. Unfortunately for him, he couldn't do anything with his fists. Another right hand landing for Malinaji as he steps off the line. Punches in round five. The punches in round five. Again, one sided for Malinaji. 23 landed as opposed to just eight for Yelton. Yelton having a terrible time connecting with Malinaji. And we did see the big left hook land right at the end of the round for Yelton, but it was way too late to do anything about either winning the round or hurting Malinaji. Copy box is presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electronic stock locates. How do you take Malinaji's jab away from him? That's the only punch he's really 
using this evening. But work your jab and smother him. Work your jab and move forward with your jab. Go under his jab. Nice right hand. A beautiful right hand by Yelp. Corley has a solid chin. But you have to work, work your jab. Move forward with your jab. Get under Paulie's jab. Get around his jab. If he don't land a first and second jab, he'll get, he'll get discouraged with his own jab and he'll stop jabbing. But the more he can land a first jab, he's not going to stop jabbing. Yelton giving him so much distance. Malinaji not having a problem getting that left jab off. And Yelton has a four, four inch reach and he's not using it. Look, no jab. He's standing right in front of Paulie, allowing Paulie to get off. And Brian, one of the things that the average person doesn't understand about boxing is how difficult it is for Yelton to make that final 12 inches that he needs just to get that little bit closer to get that punch in. Right, that's why you tighten your defense. You know Paulie's a good jabber. Tighten your defense, going the outside of his jab and move in with your jab. 48 Matt, seconds remaining in the sixth. I know it's simple, and if it's applied correctly, it is simple. I mean, there's a reason why professional boxers like Yelton are staying that far away. And there's the reason right there. And he's just allowing Paulie to dictate. He's making it easy for Paulie. But Paulie's, Paulie's hurting him, is my point. That's why he can't do it. That's why he can't come in and do it. He's getting popped. Paulie Malinaji is so quick, it's hard for Yelton to figure out how to cut the ring off when you're fighting a fighter that normally fights backwards and knows how to pivot off the line. Listen, he had success in the second round. He should have built off of that. He should have stayed aggressive. He should have kept using his jab and using those right hands, the straight right hands. Round seven scheduled for eight in the junior welterweight division. Paulie Malinaji in the black and gold from Brooklyn, New York. Jeremy Yelton in the Carolina blue. From Forest City, North Carolina. Gentlemen, how do you have this fight scored? I have it scored 59-55 um, in favor of Paulie. You know, five rounds to one. I got the same card, and I think you made an excellent point at the end of the last round, Brian, and that is that Yelton may have let his moment go by. He won the second round and just stopped fighting. To the key here, I've been noticing the past couple rounds, Yelton is just looking to land a hook. He's looking to land right, um, you know, left hooks. Paulie gets under that stuff. You have to change the tempo. Change the tempo, throw right hands. And he's had success with the right hand. Right. Forget about the hook for about a round. See, right hand. Right there, he beat him to the punch, which is uh, not easy to do with Malinaji. Now Malinaji with some swelling under his right eye. So if he throw that wide shot like that, he'll never catch Paulie. No, Two he sees that coming. Up. Yeah. There's a right hand for Paulie Malinaji. And he gets out of trouble, stepping off. Left hook, and that buckled Yelton. That left hook buckled Yelton. Yelton is in trouble right now. Does Pauli Malinaji know it? I don't think he do. That was a solid left hook. Yelton froze and backed up for a second. He looks pretty solid to me, though, right now. He just can't follow Pauli like this. See, what, what Pauli's doing is actually a little role reversal. Yelton should be throwing counter right hands over Paulie's jab. Every time Yelton attempted a jab, Paulie threw that overhand right. You're exactly right, and he is following him around the ring. Brian, is it too soon to make a judgment on whether or not it looks like Malinaji's right hand is recovered? Um, I, I think it's recovered. It's a matter of if it recovers mentally. Because mm -hmm. he, he's throwing the right hand. He's actually hitting um, Yelton on the top of the head, which is the hard part, hard part of the body. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of him being mental. Going home after this saying, you know what? My right hand passed the test, I'm fine. And just forget about it. I mean, I get envious over some guys like this. Well, not poorly, you know, in particular, but you know, some guys who can bang with their right hand and it doesn't bother them. Right. I haven't gone through it yourself. I punch a pillow, my hand breaks. Oof. Don't punch any pillows. <laughs> 27 seconds to go on the seventh. Malinaji, a throwback boxer in terms of his slickness. Now it's target practice for him. He'll never land those big shots like that. Looks a little tired to me. Yeah, his punches got slower. End of the seventh.
All right, the eighth and final round between Paulie Malinaji and Jeremy Yelton. And Malinaji, I would imagine, gentlemen, the leader so far as we head into the eighth round. Yep, and you can see the copy box numbers, and Malinaji pushed in the ground there. Yelton raising his hands up as if he's just won the fight. <laughs> I guess if you've missed as many times as he has. Well, you know what? You'll take anything. Paulie has been clowning the more fight. Listen, you get revenge any way you can. <laughs> now, this is the kind of pressure that Yelton should have been putting on Malinaji from the opening round. Exactly. You want to make it an ugly fight, want to make it rough, so does the crowd boo you. Look, he's gotten about six inches closer, and Malinaji hits him with a good right hand. But that's fine. You want Paulie fighting him. You can catch him in between shots. But right, make it just like that. Rough him up. Because you're getting hit anyway. Right, exactly. Also give yourself a chance to land. Right. Yelton going out with a bang. And it'll also make it a little uncomfortable for, for Paulie in there. Now Yelton just stopped. Blood coming from the nose of Yelton. Malinaji calmly backs up, lands a right hand, followed by a jab. Now Yelton's trying to clown Malinaji. How but, about that? But if you're Yelton's corner, you don't want him doing this. This is not his forte. You don't want him no. doing this. You can't out showboat the showboat. Right. And Malinaji making Yelton look <laughs> awfully <laughs> foolish in the ring now. That's fine. Last round, stay in his chest. Keep roughing him up. I mean, I'm an advocate of clean boxing, but listen, rough him up. Elbows, what you have to do? Hey, you know, you can rough up a guy and still be fighting a clean be clean, fight. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, James Tony made a living on doing that. Uh, he's he could be um, well the, he could be dirty the cleanest dirty fight I ever <laughs> seen. Ask Mickey Roar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tony used to hit you on the kidneys and the side. If he think he's going to match poorly with speed, it's not going to happen. It may be that he's just giving it up here. Really, Brian, because at this point, Yelton's fighting like he's got the lead. But don't concede with 20, 25 seconds left in the fight. I agree 100%. The final 25 seconds, Paulie Malinaji looking to improve his record to 20 and 0. Oh, beautiful lead left hook by Yelton. With no right hand behind it. And Malinaji has no problem taking it. The end of the eighth. Paulie Malinaji in front of his friends and family with another solid performance. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. But first, a round of applause for two true warriors. Judge Glenn Feldman has it 80-72. Judge John McKay has it 79-73. And Judge Jimmy Pierce has it 80-72. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Paulie the Magic Man.